Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is walking on water. Last week, we were in the crowd of people when Jesus took five loaves of bread and two fish and fed as many as 15,000 people. It was the greatest feeding miracle Jesus ever did. The people were so impressed, they wanted to make Jesus their king right there and then. John chapter 6 and verse 15 says, Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountains by himself. Now Jesus had already sent his disciples ahead of him in the boat back to the town of Capernaum. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 22, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go back before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. Notice that Jesus ordered the disciples to sail into a storm. They didn't know it, but Jesus did. There are some storms that are worth facing in life. That's a really important sentence. John chapter 6 and verse 18, the sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. But by that time, the boat was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 24. Jesus saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. That means they were rowing. They were rowing hard. If you've ever rowed against the wind at the boat, you know it can be a very difficult thing to do. In fact, John chapter 6 and verse 19 says they had rowed for three or four miles, a very long way to row a very old, heavy wooden boat. And so they were pushing that boat along with the oars. What do you think the disciples were thinking about as they rowed. Now, were the 12 baskets of bread in the boat with them, reminding them of the miraculous power of Jesus? Could they smell the miracle as they rowed? Yet they were becoming very afraid. Matthew tells us in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to them walking on the water. Now the fourth watch in Roman time is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., in the morning and they did not expect at that moment for the prophecy of Job was about to be fulfilled before their very eyes. Job chapter 9 and verse 8 says, he alone stretched out the heavens, he trampled on the waves of the sea. Mark tells us in Mark chapter 6 and verse 48, he meant to pass them by. Job, back to Job chapter 9 and verse 11, Behold, he passes by me, and I see him not, and he moves on. I do not perceive him. What interesting verses these are as we have deeper understanding on this story tonight. Job clearly saw this event and he wrote about it. See, Jesus always shows up in the storms we face. But unless we are looking for him, we could easily miss his presence. As Mark said, he would have just walked right on by if they were not watching and calling out to him. If you're in a storm right now, look around. I assure you, you will find Jesus is in the middle of your storm. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 26. Immediately, Jesus spoke to them saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 27. This lovely expression, take heart, is found at least 10 times in the New Testament. And it simply means to keep up your courage. And whatever you're facing, the word from heaven to you today is keep trying, keep up your courage, keep up your effort. It's going to be worthwhile. And then this phrase, do not be af afraid, 
is found 365 times in the Bible. That's a promise from God for every day of the year. Now, while the disciples were afraid, Jesus had had his eye on them in the storm because he could see them from the mountain as they struggled. And now he comes demonstrating that he is more than a prophet, more than a man. He's the Son of God who has authority and power to walk on water. He speedily catches up with them and is walking on the boat right next to them. What an incredible story this is. Uh, so Jesus said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. John chapter 14, uh, Matthew chapter 14 and verse 28. And the word that uh, is used there is the word erkomai. And it's when you hear the voice of Jesus calling to you, calling you into what seems like it is an impossible situation, say yes. Because when he calls, he provides. Hear the voice of Jesus saying, Erkomai, come. Jesus said to Peter, come. So he got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 29. God is calling someone at this moment into a new adventure, walking with Jesus on the storms of life. That kind voice speaking to you right now is the voice of your loving Heavenly Father. Listen to that voice. Trust that voice. Step out of your comfort zone and move towards Jesus. Now as Peter did that, we discover in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 30, when he saw the wind, he was afraid and he began to sink and he cried out, Lord, save me. Now, you might not think of being able to see the wind, but for those of us who are sailors, you can see the wind by its effect on the waters. And as the water is stirred up, you know there's a puff of wind. You can actually see the wind coming towards the boat. And Peter saw the waves, and he knew that it was the wind, and he became afraid, and he began to sink. Maybe you're having a moment in life where you feel like you're sinking, would you do what Peter did? Cry out right now, Lord, save me. Save me physically. Save me financially. Save me emotionally. Save me spiritually. Jesus is ready. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took a hold of him, saying, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Matthew chapter 14 and verse 31. There are some experiences in life that no matter how well or how poorly we do, change us forever. Peter could always tell the story. He was the one who had the courage to get out of the boat and prove definitively that Jesus would not let him down even if he began to sink. And so Peter had to walk back with Jesus on the same water, troubled water that he walked out of. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 32, when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Peter walked out to Jesus on stormy water, and he walked back to the boat with Jesus on the same stormy water. The wind did not cease until they were in the boat. All Jesus did was pull Peter up. He still had to walk through the troubled waters back to the boat. Jesus is ready today to pull you up from whatever you are sinking. He will lift you uh, when you stumble, and he will walk with you through the troubles of the water that have pulled you under. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 33 says, those in the boat worshiped him. So often people write to me and say, Jesus never asked anybody to worship him. Well, of course he didn't. He didn't need to. People naturally worshipped him because of who he is and what he did. Those in the boat, that is, all 12 disciples who were with him in the boat, worshipped at the feet of Jesus. And this is what they said. Those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 33. I invite you to worship Jesus today. 
to recognize him as the Son of God, that he was more than a man, more than a prophet. He was indeed the Savior of the world who had come from heaven. This is such a powerful example of people recognizing who Jesus is. Maybe you're in a storm right now, and you've only thought of Jesus as a man. If you'll turn to him and say, save me, you'll discover he's more than a man and more than a prophet. Walking on water is called a sign miracle by John because it points to Jesus as the Son of God. Now, Jesus is still calling followers to do what appears to be humanly impossible tasks. When Jesus calls, you can do the impossible, what you believe to be impossible, in your own strength or resources, but you can do it because of the voice of God calling you. When the angel uh, Gabriel spoke to Mary about the child she would carry, she asked a very good question. Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? Luke chapter 1 and verse 34. The angel answered, nothing will be impossible with God. Luke chapter 1 and verse 37. Nothing is composed of two words, no and rhema. And rhema is the voice of Jesus calling you to walk into what you think is impossible. And so the angel answered, nothing will be impossible with God. What God calls you to do, God has the power to fulfill itself. He will fulfill those words for you. John chapter 6 says, when they were back in the boat, they were glad to take him in the boat. And immediately the boat landed to the place to which they were going. Now that might not seem immediately evident to you, but what we are reading now is the boat was supernaturally propelled without wind and without rowing just by the presence of Jesus. The boat suddenly came to the destination to which they were traveling. And I want to say to you that at the end of the storms of life, there's always accelerated progress, whatever difficulty you're facing right now. An acceleration is about to come. Jesus is in the boat with you, and your circumstances will be propelled forward by him. Uh, release accelerated progress over the problems that you are facing right now. Matthew chapter 14 says, When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized it was Jesus, they sent around to all that region and brought to him all who were sick. And they implored Jesus that he might touch only the fringe. They might touch only the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 36. Isn't this an amazing story? It begins with a journey to the other side where Jesus heals people. Then he multiplies loaves and fishes. And he walks on the waters. These two stories belong together. Before Jesus fed, he healed. After Jesus walked on the water, the boat was suddenly propelled to the destination. Jesus got out the boat and he healed people. It's such a powerful thing. He healed and he preached. He healed and he preached. Mark chapter 6 and verse 35, 56 says, and whenever he came into villages or cities or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. I invite you to reach out and touch Jesus physically where you are. As though he were there, just reach your hand out towards him and say, Jesus, touch me and make me well. He'll touch you. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Before I leave you, let me take a few moments and pray with you that God would give you faith to overcome the storms of life. You're facing a very difficult moment. Trust God. Look around. Look for Jesus. He is there. I pray that God will give you faith to see Jesus with you in the storm. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Let's come against uh, some... Uh, physical ailments that as God puts them on my spirit to pray tonight.
pray especially for gallbladder infections. We've prayed for people with kidney stones and gallstones and, and all sorts of uh, problems with organs in the body related to purifying liver cancers. All of those really important organs that are in your body for the purification of your body, I command them to be whole in Jesus' name for cancers to go, for prostate cancer to go, and for those parts of your body that need a touch from God, we call down heaven right now. Say, Holy Spirit, touch people who are listening to this message to receive healing in their body for ear infections to go in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. If you have just been healed by the power of God, you have felt his presence come upon your life, write to me and let me know what God has done for you. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.